any sexual sin, whether it's a thought or an act, need to be confessed upon. Everything we confess it, we expose it, and the devil has less power over me. Our enemy, the devil, likes when we cover up because it's easier for him to foster these bad feelings and bad sins to make them grow and become a habit and then difficult to break. So I should confess about pornography. I should confess about masturbation, premarital relations, um, sexual thoughts, anything, impurity in marriage. All of that should be confessed upon. Now, a very common question that what if I keep falling in the same sin over and over again? The answer is confess over and over again. We don't over overcome our enemy, the devil, by confessing a sin just once. Many a time, a sin that has a, a stronghold on us must be confessed multiple times. But with every following confession, we find that the grace of God grows stronger and stronger and stronger and more powerfully in such a way that we are able one day to say to our enemy, the devil, that has no bite, that has no power, that has no influence. I have come to a point where I now so hate the behavior of my past and so love the closeness that I experience with God over and over and over again through the sacrament over and over and over again, that I don't want to trade that closeness with God for anything under any circumstance. What if you have a weak sinuses and you keep getting sinus infection? And every month you get a sinus infection. Would you say, oh, I was treated three times before. I'm not going to get treatment. I will leave my sinusitis. It's going to get worse and it's going to come down in your lungs and it's going to be very resistant to treatment. If you have a recurrent sickness, you get recurrent treatments. Sometimes the treatment is the same. Sometimes there is a modification in the practices that the fathers may give us. But do not be embarrassed to go back with the same sin. Actually, the fathers are more proud of us when we go back saying, I did it again. I fell again. It is very shameful, especially confessing about sexual sins. I agree with you. But number one, I want you to know, if the fathers did not hear us confessing about sexual sins, and we are in these ages, they probably would guess we are not telling all the truth. Two, the fathers themselves, regardless of their age, have gone through the same struggle we are going through. Three, if you get ashamed, that's not the wrong feeling. The prodigal son was ashamed that he left his father and went to look after his desires. He was coming down and his head was down and he couldn't look at his face and he told him, I do not deserve to be your son. Accept me as your harling servant. I think also when you confess your sins, you receive a, a positive message about who you are and how much God loves you. Sometimes when we fall into sin, we are overcome with shame and, and deep feelings of guilt. But God is not about, you know, beating us up. If we feel guilty, it's because we did something wrong. But we're not dirty, we're not bad. When you confess, your priest will give you that message that you're not a bad person, you're not, you're not horrible, there's nothing wrong with you, but there's something that you need to address. God does not define us by our sins. God 
sent his son to die for you and me so we can confess and repent of our sins. Don't make your sexual sins bigger than God. And don't be ashamed of what you have done. Shame and guilt will only imprison you. It is wrong to commit these acts. It is wrong and it goes against God. But God loves you so much and he wants you to confess and he wants you to repent. And he will make you new and whole again. And he will purify you and he will prepare you for the right man or woman to marry you and give you the best gift that God created, the gift of sex, the gift of marriage, because God's creation is perfect. It is not flawed by sin. So even if it's shameful, and even if you have done it, take your time now and pray and ask God to help you confess it. And I promise you will feel better. And you're not alone. We're all sinners. But we have a God who forgives all our sins. Thank you, God. That shameful feeling is the Holy Spirit telling you, hey, you're doing something wrong. What you're feeling here is guilt and shame because this is not a right thing. And you could use it as a reminder to not do this again, to know how it felt the first time and stay away from it. But don't be ashamed in front of the priest to admit this wrong. Know that he doesn't remember it. He doesn't hold it against you. He doesn't tell anybody. All these fears that we have, uh, those are doubts from the devil. Abuna is not, um, Abuna is never going to say, I've never heard that before. Uh, Abuna has probably heard it thousands and thousands of times. It's because you're, you're, you're struggling in a, in, a, in a normal, even though it's, a, it's a, not a good thing, but it's a normal thing. That doesn't mean you should do it. It doesn't mean it's okay, but it's normal, meaning that many people go through it. Uh, again, it's not okay, but many people go through it. So Abuna hears this all the time. Abuna is not going to say, he's not going to be surprised if you were to confess a sexual sin to him. And the, the other thing is that I think that feeling of, of, of guilt or of discomfort is actually very helpful because it will help you over time to avoid the sin in the first place. And I think, I, I want everyone to know in every area of your lives that Abuna is there for a specific reason. He's there to give you the message of God, to, to teach you, to help you, to, to provide God's healing. Abuna is a, is a resource. Abuna is a resource given to us by God. Do I mention details about sexual sins? How do I actually confess? And let me give you the answer I heard from many wise fathers. Do not give the details unless you are asked to. And most of the fathers, with their wisdom, they will rarely ask you, who is the girl or what is, unless it's important for your treatment. But they will hear, for example, I'm watching pornography, my father. And they will ask you, is it every day? Are you, do you go home early before anyone goes home? These questions are important because the fathers will be able to tell you, you need to replace your leisure time with something else. But generally speaking, you don't have to give details. I want to even go one step further. If you are so, so embarrassed and can't say a sin, just write it in a piece of paper, give it to the father while you're confessing, and after you confess everything, tell him, my father, there is one other thing I can't utter it. I'm so ashamed of myself. He will read it, he will give you the absolution you need to hear, and he will lift the guilt that you are complaining of. The thing you need to do first is you need to recognize the sexual sin. You confess it to God. If you're not sure it's sexual sin, 
Speak to your father of confession about it. Go openly and speak. Prayerfully say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I know is wrong. And say to your father of confession, and this stuff I want to ask you about, that I might not sin against God, that I might not have any sin against God. Confess it like that. Believe me, there isn't a priest on this earth who hasn't heard the confession of sexual sin. And believe me, every priest I know looks with great respect and appreciation on a son or a daughter who is so courageous to confess sexual sin. Remember my brother, sister, my son and daughter, those fathers are there to hear our worst things. They are not there to hear how good we are. You don't ever go to the doctor and tell him, I'm very healthy, so why are you coming? But you're going to the doctor because you need to be better and more well. Another question is, does really God forgive my sins? And I want to assure you, 100% forgiveness is guaranteed. Never underestimate what sin does to a person. God has a plan for you. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, the plan is to prosper and not to harm you. The plan is to give you hope and a future. God wants to watch over you and advise you. Psalm 32, verse 8. But so long as you let sin rule in your life, none of that happens. So long as you have hidden sin that is unconfessed and rules over you, you don't get to experience the good that God has planned for you. What you need to do is to come to God and throw yourself at His feet and say, I can't make myself clean. Only you can, Lord. Only the blood of your Son can wash me and make me white as snow, like David the prophet pleaded. God's messages, God's healing, come through Abuna. Not only through Abuna, but they come through Abuna. And, and Abuna's committed his life to doing this work. So he's not like, you know, ah, there's going to bother me with another confession about this. Like, he, he dedicated his life to do this. So that's like what he's here for to hear how he can help you in, in, in your life. There's a verse in the Old Testament. It says that God has a sea of forgetfulness and fishing is not allowed. When God throws your sins in the sea of forgetfulness, he will not fish back into your past to find what did you have done. So my daughter and my son, believe me, your sins are forgiven. And every time you go, even for the same sin hundred times, every time you go, your sins are forgiven. And not only you are forgiven, but you go happier, joyful, less guilty, no shame. That equals everything you look forward to. What if after you did all of this, you fell back in the same sin? As we did said before, you go back again in confession. You go back to repentance. You need to stand firm with the sacrament of confession. Why is repeating the sacrament of confession so important? If I haven't already made it clear, let me state it now unequivocally. Because the more you confess, the closer you become to God for the longer amount of time. And the longer you are close to God, the more you love it, and the more you long for it, and the more you don't want to let it go, not even for the temptation. That's the point. Come to God and confess with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, and with all of your mind, and enjoy this beauty of being close to God. When you are tempted, cry out to God and say, God, I don't want to be separated from you. I don't want to be far from you. I need you and I need to be close to you. Come, Lord, 
and help me and deliver me and give me the strength to flee now. Where is the door, Lord, that you promised to make available that door of escape that St. Paul taught me of? You really need to know also your vulnerable areas. Repentance and confession needs also your spiritual struggle. If you know that when you are alone at home, you sin, avoid being alone at home. If you know there is a special friend that makes you falter and fall, avoid that friend. If you know that there is certain computer is filled with filth because you have gone into many wrong things, clean it, give it to somebody to put firewalls, put some areas, clean your history and so forth. That's what I mean by being mindful. The church teaches that we are blessed to partake of the divine nature of God. That means we get to take a portion of his divine nature. You know that we take a portion of his divine nature through the sacrament of Holy Communion. And you know that we are not to take it without being worthy and that we need the sacrament of confession to be taken to be able to take it. But when we take it, we are given everything we need to live a godly life. The Spirit of God who lives within us gives us everything we need to live a godly life. This was Fireplace. This episode was dedicated about God's forgiveness, repentance, and confession. Without this episode, many of our past episodes could be difficult to comprehend. By keeping fire in the fireplace, we are about to understand the design of the maker of our sexual organs. His ideas, his intentions in our lives. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of Fireplace. Keep fire in its place. Until we meet again, God bless.